Hi guys, in this video we're going to concentrate on the prevention and control of disease. Uh, basically what's happened is we've worked out that prevention is better than a cure and if we can spend a little bit of money now on preventing disease it saves us a whole heap of money later on in the treatment and management of that disease. And there's a few ways that we can present, prevent disease. The first is through public health programs. You can also use pesticide to kill the vectors of disease, as well as genetically engineering organisms so that they can't get the disease. And we'll look at an example of each of these ones. Okay, so a public health program is basically that. It's public, so made for a whole population rather than particular individuals. And it focuses on the prevention of disease through promotion of the disease and uh, education as well as protection of the population. A really good example of a public health program in Australia is the Slip Slop Slap campaign. This campaign originated in Victoria but has since spread to other parts of the country uh, under the umbrella of the Sun Smart campaign. Uh, it was introduced in the 80s by the government because they saw that there was an increasing amount of skin cancers uh, that were occurring and uh, as well as people dying this was putting quite a large cost on the health system. So they uh, started this campaign and how it works uh, is it asks people to slip slop slap and be a bit more sun smart, uh, educating the public on the dangers of UV radiation uh, as well as changing the culture and changing the culture through uh, a number of things uh, like stopping the culture of tanning down at the beach, uh, but also things like uh, sponsoring sports events uh, like the cricket. Now you see everyone wearing their zinc at the cricket and wearing hats, uh, as well as changing the culture in workplaces, so like on building sites, encouraging the use of hats and uh, sunscreen. And you can see that it's been fairly effective uh, in the, this is looking at the first 15 years or so of the uh, program, there was a marked decrease in the amount of weekend sunburn in summer. As far as stopping the skin cancers, uh, there's been a decrease in two types of skin cancer, being the basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma, uh, and the plateau of the melanoma. Now, the melanoma is the most dangerous form of skin cancer and it was increasing uh, in the years leading up to the campaign quite quickly uh, and was the impetus for starting the campaign uh, and has since then plateaued. Now if you look at uh, statistics now and compare the two populations being the ones that grew up in the sun smart years, so those people under the age of about 45, and those people who uh, are older than that, that incidence of um, melanoma uh, is, is still increasing in those older people, but is uh, decreasing in the younger people. So those, uh, as a whole, uh, it has been beneficial. This campaign continues today. Uh, Sid the Seagull has had a bit of a facelift over the last 30 or 40 years, and the campaign now includes uh, Seek Shade and Slide on Some Sunnies. Pesticides can also be used to control disease, and the way they work is by uh, killing mainly insects, being the vectors of disease. So here you think about things like malaria. DDT is a pesticide that uh, was used to control mosquitoes, uh, mosquitoes being the vector for malaria, uh, and it was used in the uh, World War II era uh, in both Europe and the South Pacific. Uh, it was at first quite effective, uh, but then the uh, mosquitoes built a tolerance or a resistance uh, to DDT, and they had to start using more and more of the chemical to actually get the desired effects and later they found that uh, DDT is a really bad bioaccumulator uh, and it was uh, banned from use around the world. 
Another really clever way that we can control disease is genetically engineering organisms so that they are no longer able to get the disease uh, or so that they're resistant to the disease, you could also say. And a good example of this is uh, biotech cotton. Uh, now cotton in Australia is around 99% uh, genetically modified. Uh, BT cotton was developed in 1996 uh, and it's a form that uses the, a gene that comes from the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis or something like that. Um, and this actually produces a protein uh, that's toxic to the cotton boilworm. And the cotton, cotton boilworm is the major pest for the cotton. Uh, so what this means is that uh, that boilworm no longer eats the cotton or dies when it eats the cotton. Uh, so therefore you're not losing uh, your crop to these worms. And previously they had to uh, spray with insecticides to kill these worms and other uh, things, and they don't have to do that anymore. Uh, so they save a lot of time and money uh, by uh, having this genetically modified crop. And it's actually reduced the amount of pesticide used in cotton crops by about 80%. In this video, we've looked at public health programs uh, for the prevention of disease, spending a little bit of money now to save a lot of money later on. We've looked at the Slip Slop Slap campaign as a way to reduce the amount of skin cancer in Australia, and particularly Victoria. We've looked at pesticides controlling the insect vectors of disease, such as DDT for malaria. Uh, genetic engineering, so genetically modifying an organism uh, so it is resistant to a disease or pest, such as Bt cotton, which produces a toxin that kills the cotton boilworm, uh, its major pest. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.